Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about specifically the visual pathway. So we're going to take how the light hits the retina, and we're going to take it through the optic nerve and all the other different processes. So if you guys have already watched our video on the phototransduction cascade, that's going to be very, very important that you do that before we get into this visual pathway. Because we already talked about exactly how those light rays got converted into chemical changes and then electrical changes, and how they went down the axons of the ganglion cells, which basically made up the optic nerve. All right, <clears throat> so now, we're gonna have two eyeballs, right? This is the, we're gonna say this is the left eyeball, and this is the right eyeball. Okay, now first things first, what I want us to try to imagine here, we're gonna put a lot of different concepts together. When you guys are looking, you guys are like looking at anything around you, we our eyes are so amazing that they can pick up different types of visual fields. So for example, this is the right visual field, or the right eye's visual field, and this is the left eye's visual field, okay? So what is this one right here? This is the right eye's visual field, and this one over here is the left eye's visual field. Okay. Now, within the visual field, you have two different components of this visual field. We're going to say this is the nasal. So since you're, you'd have your honker right there, pretend this is your nose. Okay, so pretend this structure here is your nose. Okay. Since this is the nose, these two structures that are near the nasal region, this is the nasal component of the visual field. All right, so this is the nasal component of the visual field. And then this one over here would be near the temple. So this is the temporal component of the visual field. And this over here is going to be the temporal component of the visual field. Okay? Now, to make it easy though, now that we know that this is what it is, it's nasal and the temporals, these words are going to get interchanged a lot. So I do not want to confuse you guys. So what I'm going to do is, for the sake of it, is I'm going to switch nasal, and since this is the right visual field, <laughs> this is what gets confusing. The right visual field has a left visual field and a right visual field, okay? So the right eye has a left visual field and a right visual field. So we're going to say this is the left visual field, and this is the right visual field, okay? So I just want to make it as simple as I possibly can here. This whole right eye is gonna have two fields. It's gonna have the right visual field and left visual field. Same thing, this left eye is gonna have two visual fields. It's going to have a left visual field and a right visual field, okay? Simple as that. Now we're gonna be able to kind of do this a lot easier now. So instead of using the words nasal and temporal, but understand those words, because it's gonna be important in lesions. Okay, let's say first off, when we're looking out, let's say that this part of the retina, there's two parts of the retina. So this is the right eye. This part of the retina is closest to the temple, or the right temple, right? So we're gonna call this part of the retina, we're gonna call this the temporal hemi retina, okay? That's the temporal hemi-retina. Now, here's what gets really funky. The temporal hemi-retina is receiving light rays from the left visual field, okay? So from here, this part here, this left visual field is hitting this part of the retina, okay? So if light rays from the left visual field are hitting this part of the hit retina, the temporal hemi-retina, but then, the, what is this one? This one is close to the actual nose. So since it's close to the nose, this is called the nasal, right, hemi retina. So this is called the nasal hemi retina, and this is called the temporal hemi retina. The nasal hemi retina is receiving light from the right visual field. So the nasal hemi retina is getting hit with light from the right visual field. All right, so just to make sure we're clear, left visual field hits the temporal hemi retina, 
and the right visual field hits the nasal hemiretina. Sweet deal, same thing would happen up here. What would this one be? This one right here would be the temporal hemiretina. I'm gonna put HR here. And this right up here is going to be the nasal hemiretina, okay? And same thing, nasal hemiretina is gonna be receiving visual field from left visual field. So it's gonna be getting it from the left visual field. And then the temporal hemiretina on the left eyeball is gonna be receiving it from the right visual field. Okay, now that we're done with that, what happens with these fibers? Here's what I want you to remember. Anything from the right goes to the left. Anything with a left goes to the right. That's it. Anything that's coming from the left, okay. Well, this temporal hemiretina, this is on the right eyeball, okay, so this is the right eyeball. It's picking up information from the left visual field. Well, anything from the left has to go to the right. Oh, so these should stay on the same side then. So these fibers right here, they should not go and cross over to the other side. They should stay on the same side. So they're gonna come down the optic nerve. And you know what happens? The two optic nerves actually come together. They come together and form this big old structure that you kind of see right here. I'm actually not gonna do it in brown here because I'm gonna use this brown a lot. I'm just gonna say here that this point here where the two optic nerves are connected, all of this part right here, this whole thing is called the optic chiasma. And the optic chiasma is where the right optic nerve and the left optic nerve come together, right near the pituitary gland. So this is right near the pituitary gland. Okay, now what happens here? The fibers from the temporal hemiretina, which is receiving it from the left visual field, we said anything from the left visual field will go to the right eye. Okay, so this is going to cross I mean, it's not gonna cross, it's gonna stay on the same side. So it's gonna come down the right optic nerve where the optic chiasma is. It's not gonna cross, it's gonna stay on the same side and it's gonna move down this structure right here which is called the optic tract. And we're gonna stop right there, okay? So what is this structure right here? This long tube-like structure here. This whole tube-like structure here is called the optic tract. So this would be the right optic tract. What do you think this one is? This is the left optic tract. And this is the optic chiasma. Okay, now let's follow this nasal hemiretina. Well, the nasal hemiretina is receiving information from the right visual field. Well, anything from the right goes to the left. So this has got a cross. So these fibers from the nasal hemiretina, it's going to come through the optic nerve, the right optic nerve, and it's going to cross at the optic chiasma and go over here to the opposite side. It's going to come over to what optic tract? It's going to come over here to the left optic tract and it's going to come right to there and that's what we'll stop at that point. Okay? Now that we understand this, this should be a lot easier now. Let's do this one. Nasal hemiretina is receiving what? It's getting hit from the left visual field. Well if it's receiving information from the left visual field, anything from the left has to go to the right. Oh, okay. Well this is on the left, that means it has to cross over here. So it'll come down the left optic nerve, but then instead of going on the same side, it's gonna cross over, it's gonna become contralateral, right? And these fibers are gonna come over here, and they're gonna move all the way over here on this side and come right there, okay? So all the things that are coming from the left visual field on the left nasal hemiretina is gonna be coming from the left visual field, is gonna be taking that information on the right optic tract and into this area that we're gonna talk about in a second. Let's keep going. Temporal hemiretina. It's gonna be receiving information from the right visual field, right, of the left eye. So it's gonna be receiving from the right visual field. When anything from the right goes to the left, we're already on the left side of the eye. Let's just keep it ipsilateral. So these fibers here are going to come down the left optic nerve. It's not gonna cross at the optic chiasma. It's gonna stay on the same side and move down the left optic tract and into this area right here. Okay, so these are your fibers that are crossing, and these are the ipsilateral fibers. So what are these fibers right here called? These fibers here that are staying on the same side are your ipsilateral fibers. These are the ipsilateral fibers. And these fibers here that are crossing are called your contralateral fibers. Contralateral fibers, okay? 
All right, sweet deal. Now that we know that, let's keep it bring. Let's keep bringing it to where we're going to go next. So we already went from these hem hemiretinies from the visual fields. We followed it down their optic nerves, the optic chiasm. We followed it down the optic tract. We see the ipsilateral fibers and we know the contralateral fibers. Sweet deal. What happens is from this optic tract, it's going to come to a special area in the thalamus. I'm actually zooming in on the specific nucleus on that thalamus, but let's say pretend here that I have. I draw kind of like a little view of the thalamus. It has kind of like this like piece-like symbol a little bit. And it kind of looks like this. And what happens is it has a special nucleus coming off of it, right? It has a special nucleus coming off of it like this. It's called the lateral geniculate nucleus. What I'm doing is I'm taking the lateral geniculate nucleus and just zooming in on it, okay? So this right here is the thalamus. But a special nucleus of the thalamus is called the lateral geniculate nucleus. I'm taking the lateral geniculate nucleus and zooming in on it, okay, so that we're clear. So this is the lateral geniculate nucleus. It has a total of six layers, six layers. So we'll layer this one, two, three, four, five, six, and the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why am I telling you this? Because any ipsilateral fibers go to two, three, and five layers. So ipsilateral fibers within the lateral geniculate nucleus are gonna go to layers two, layers three, and layers five. So what does that leave for the contralateral? The contralateral is left with going to one, four, and six. So then the contralateral fibers will go to one, four, and six. Okay, so now it comes into this area, right? So I'm gonna kind of make these different because obviously the same color. But look here, from this one, this is the contralateral. So this one is the contralateral fiber. The contralateral fiber goes to what? One, four, and six. So if I were to do it, let's actually just make it a different color from this point so that we're not confusing this. So now I'm gonna come from this contralateral fiber, it's gonna be maroon. It's gonna give connections to four, it's gonna give connections to six, and it's gonna give connections to one. Then the ipsilateral fibers are gonna to go to two, three, and five, okay? And the same thing is gonna happen over here. Let's say that I just, for the sake of it, I, I do the same thing over here, the ipsilateral fibers and the contralateral fibers over here. So this one right here is the contralateral. I'm gonna keep the contralateral maroon. Contralateral goes to what? It goes to six, it goes to four, and it goes to one. Ipsilateral fibers are gonna to go to two, three, and five. Now, from this, they're gonna come out of the lateral geniculate nucleus. So these fibers are gonna be coming out of the lateral geniculate nucleus. So they'll terminate in this area. Some of the fibers we'll talk about when we talk about the pupillary light reflex. Some of these fibers can actually go from the lateral geniculate nucleus and into the specific area of the midbrain. They'll go into the midbrain and there's two structures in the midbrain that's very important. One is gonna be right here called the superior colliculus. It's gonna give off some branches that can go there. So some of the fibers can go here to the superior colliculus. So some of the fibers can come to the superior colliculus, but a really, really important one is gonna be just anterior to the superior colliculus. There's a very important nucleus here called the pretectal nucleus. So a really important nucleus here called the pretectal nucleus. And we'll talk about this one and how it's connected with your basically the constriction of the pupil. Okay, so that's the pretectal nuclei. But we're not gonna talk about that now, we're gonna talk about the rest of this pathway. Okay? I just want you to realize that some of these fibers can go into the midbrain. However, most of the fibers are gonna continue. Let's do this in pink now. Let's bring it all nice and, nice and pretty, all right? So coming out of the lateral geniculate nucleus, there's gonna be two types of fibers. One is gonna run through the temporal lobe and come to this area of the occipital lobe. So you see this right here, all this structure that we have right here, this is representing the occipital lobe. So this is the occipital lobe, and this would technically be on the left side, and this is the occipital lobe, and this would be on the right side. And what's separating them is what's called the calcarine fissure, right? This is what's called the calcarine fissure right here. I'm not gonna do that. I was, remember, it's the calcarine fissure, all right? 
Now, some of the fibers from the lateral geniculate nucleus move through what's called the temporal lobe. So some of them move through an area of the brain called the temporal lobe to go to the occipital lobe. Some of the fibers actually move through the parietal lobe to come to the occipital lobe. So what's the other one right here? This would be the parietal lobe. And then the same thing would happen over here. So if we would just continuously do this, because it's going to be important that we make this very, very consistent here. One's going to move through the temporal lobe to come to the occipital lobe. And one's going to move through the parietal lobe to come to the occipital lobe. OK, sweet, stinking deal. This is the temporal. And this one right here would be the parietal. The reason why I'm being so picky is because these ones have different, they're different types of fibers. These are actually the ones that are moving through the parietal lobe. These are called the superior retinal fibers. They also call it Barum's loop. So some Barum dude must have came up with it, right? So these superior retinal fibers are actually also called Barum's loop, and they're moving through the parietal lobe. These ones that are moving through the temporal lobe are the inferior retinal fibers. So these are the inferior retinal fibers. And this is actually called Myers loop. So again, some, some dude named Myers came up with that, right? So again, inferior retinal fibers. And this is a part of Myers loop. And this is important because it talks about when we get to lesions, right? Okay. Now, these that are moving through the parietal lobe, they'll come to the occipital lobe, and they'll go to a specific area, a specific like, part of the occipital lobe. And that specific area of the occipital lobe is actually called the striate cortex. And the striate cortex is basically the primary visual cortex. So the striate cortex is basically the primary visual cortex. This is where the perception of these visual stimuli become what we see, okay? So how we perceive these different types of images, okay? So that's an important thing to know, that these fibers are coming to the striate cortex of the occipital lobe, which is the primary visual cortex where the perception of these visual sensations are actually occurring. All right, now that we've done that, I need us to apply some visual uh, like correlations that there are certain types of lesions in different fibers here, okay? Now, the only reason I'm saying that is to know this is great, but why do we need to know this? Because we need to apply it to clinical settings. So let's say here that I have a couple different lesions. I'm gonna make it as simple, simple as possible. Let's keep all the colors here. Let's do it in like this. Maybe we'll do it in purple here. We'll represent the lesion by purple. Let's say there's a lesion here. So that's lesion number one, okay? Then let's say that there's a lesion right here. So there's a lesion right here. This is lesion number two. Then let's say that there's actually going to be a lesion um, on the outside here and outside here at the same time. So let's say that this is lesion number three. Then let's say that we have a lesion that's occurring right here, lesion number four. And then we'll have a lesion here, like lesion number five, lesion six. And then what happens if we had damaged the whole thing, lesion seven, and the last thing is what if we develop some type of damage to the occipital lobe, and that will be lesion eight. So eight total lesions is what we're gonna talk about here. Okay, here we go. If the right optic nerve is damaged, let's do our visual fields here. Let's get our little visual fields here. Keep it super, super simple here. Here's our visual field for the right eye. So we're gonna have two visual fields here, one right there for the right eye, one right there for the left eye. And we'll separate into the left visual field and right visual fields. So again, this is for the left eye, this is for the right eye. If this right here is damaged, this right here is damaged, this optic nerve, then I'm losing what? I'm losing the certain types of visual sensations from the right visual field of the right eye. Okay, so right visual field of the right eye, it's gone. I have no vision in this area. So let's go ahead and shade that in. This whole thing, gone. I got no vision there. I developed some scotoma right there and I lose all my vision in that that visual field. Then, any of the information, all the visual sensations that are coming from the left visual field of the right eye, that's gone too. All right, see ya. 
see you later, that's it. I lose all the information from these two visual fields of the right eye. What do I develop? I develop monoocular blindness. Which side? Right-sided monoocular blindness. So what is this called right here? Monoocular blindness or anopia. So we can say that this is right side, monoocular blindness or anopia. Okay? Simple as that and this would be lesion number one. So lesion number one, if you damage the optic nerve, you're going to have complete right side of the eye monoocular blindness. No vision there. Second one, let's say that you develop a pituitary tumor and it compresses the medial part here of the optic chiasma. It's compressing the contralateral fibers here. So let me make two visual fields here. Okay? So this one is going to be, again, this is for your left eye and this is for your right eye. What's going to be affected here? If I damage the contralateral fibers, what does that mean? Okay, let's follow this one over here. Nasal hemiretiny. I'm losing the visual sensations from the left visual field of the left eye. That's gone. See you later there. Okay, let's do this in a different color here, like this. This is gone. Okay, so I lose that side. I lose my temporal visual field, or the left visual field of that left eye, right? Then what? I'm also damaging these fibers. And if I damage these fibers, this is picking up information from the right visual field of the right eye. So now this is gone. So I'm losing my temporal vision on the right eye. Because I'm losing my vision in both the visual fields, the temporal fields, right, the temporal fields, this is called, they got a heck of a name for this one, they call it bi-temporal Anopia or hemianopsia. You can even say it like that. So bitemporal hemianopia. Okay, that's done. What about three? Okay, let's say that there's some type of, uh, you know the internal carotid arteries kind of run nearby here? So there's actually internal carotid arteries that run very, very near this optic chiasma right here. Let's say that for some reason, uh, these guys develop like an aneurysm, right? And they compress these outer parts here. That would be terrible. You have an aneurysm of both of them. And it's actually compressing both these fibers. What fibers? The ipsilateral fibers. So now let's draw your two visual fields here. This is for three. Okay, this is your left eye. And this is your right eye. Okay. If it's damaging the ipsilateral fibers, you're going to lose information from the nasal field of the left eye. And if you're damaging this ipsilateral fiber, you're going to lose the nasal field of the right eye. Well, if that's bitemporal, this has got to be binasal. Binasal hemianopia. Huh. Well, turn me over and tickle me twisted. Look at that. That's called binasal hemianopia. Or anops, anopsias, right? So binasal hemianopia is the third type of lesion. So that'd be number three. So this is number three here. This was number two. And this was number one. Okay, now off to number four. If you lose number four, let's make our visual fields here. And I'll do it like this. Again, left eye and right eye, left and right visual fields. If I damage these bad boys, all this right optic tract, let's follow it. The right optic tract, let's follow this one first. Okay, come over here, come over here, come over here. Okay, nasal hemiretiny is not going to work. So I'm going to lose, my, lose the left visual field of my left eye. So left visual field of the left eye, gone. That's gone. Okay. Let's follow this one. If we follow this one, follow this one, follow this one, we go over to the temporal hemiretiny, which I'm losing it from the nasal side of my right eye. Well, that sucks. And if I lose it from the nasal side of my right eye, what would I call this one? They got a heck of a name for this one. All right. It's a little tight. It's a tiny bit confusing, but I want you guys to remember. Remember we said that this was the temporal and the nasal. Nasal, temporal, right? We also said that we could say that this is the left visual field and the right visual field of the left eye. Left visual field of the right eye and right visual field of the right eye. What did I lose? 
I lose both of my left visual fields of both eyes. So because of that, they call it left homonymous hemianopia or anopsia. So that is the fourth type of lesion. And you would have the same thing if that happened on the uh, left optic tract, except it would be right homonymous hemianopia. So again, this is lesion number four. It's called left homonymous hemianopia. Now, let's say that we get back here. We get back here. Now, these are the, these are the freckers. These are the ones that can be a little bit confusing here. Let's say that I do number five here, right? So now I damage this part, the actual what loop? The Barham's loop, which are called the superior retinal fibers. Before I move on, let me make a mini little diagram here so that I can really, really make sense of this. We can split the visual fields up like we did over there, but we can actually, if we really want to be very, very specific, let's say I make here, this is my left visual field, my right eye, left eye, sorry, left eye, right eye. Remember how we split it into a left visual field and a right visual field for both of them? Guess what? We can split it into a upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. Okay. Now, let's say everything up above this part that I have in blue, this is all the superior part, right? So this is the superior part of the retina. All this down below is the inferior retina. Well, we're talking about the superior retinal fibers. Okay, now I'm looking at the eye, like from my eyes, like imagine here I have my eyeball like this. I'm actually fixating my eye and looking straight down like this into the eyeball, okay? Let's pretend for a second though, that I look at it like this now. I take this eyeball here, and let's say up here I have my superior part of the retina, and then down here I have the inferior part of the retina. The superior part of the retina is getting hit with light rays that's coming from the lower visual fields. And then the inferior retina is getting hit with light rays that's coming from the superior visual field. It's freaking crazy, I know, but I'm sorry, that's how it works. So now, when we make this one, we have to make it like this. Here's left eye, right eye. We have to split it like this, but then into fours, okay? Superior quadrant, inferior quadrant, okay? Okay, now, let's, let's think about this. If the soup, we damage this right side, the right superior retinal fibers. If the right superior retinal fibers are damaged, Remember, anything from the right side is coming from the left eye, or uh, the left visual field. So again, anything that's coming from this is coming from the left visual field. Anything that's on the right eye is coming from the left visual fields. Just wanna make sure that we get that completely clear. If this is damaged, the superior retinal fibers, then I'm losing the vision within the inferior visual field on the left side, okay? So we already know that I'm losing the actual left visual field. That's already clear because anything from the right eye is picking up information from the left visual fields. So all of this is gone, the left side. But remember, superior retinal fibers only pick up the information from the inferior visual field. So really we're only losing this part here. And we're only losing this part here. So because I'm losing vision within the lower quadrant, of the left visual field, we call this what? This one's a heck of a one too. Left inferior quadrant hemianopia. Okay, so left inferior quadrant hemianopia. And it's because we're losing our vision within the left visual field and in the inferior plane, okay? Then if we did a lesion here on the sixth one, right? So we said that we damaged the sixth one here. So let's actually do this one up here because we're running out of room up there. So let's do the sixth one up here. So the sixth one we're gonna damage right here. Okay, so let's make our visual fields. Same thing, we gotta make this into four parts. So we gotta cut it up like this, cut it up like this. Inferior retinal fibers. And this is from, this is actually on the left side. So this is the left inferior retinal fibers. So that means that it's receiving information from the right visual fields. Okay, so we already know it's right visual fields that are being affected, done. 
Okay, and again, this is left eye and this is right eye. We know that the right visual fields are going to be affected, but we know it's the inferior part of the retina that's being affected. If the inferior part of the retina is being affected, we're losing vision in the superior plane. So now what's going to happen? We're losing the right visual fields, but not in the inferior, the superior plane. So now you're losing this part here. What is this one called? This is called right superior quadrant hemi anopia. Okay, that's that one. So right superior quadrant hemi anopia. And if you get this one, then you should be able to get the same thing if I damaged this other side. Okay, it would just be the exact opposite. Then I'd be left superior quadrant hemi anopia. If I damaged this uh, superior retinal fibers of this side, on the left side, then I'd have right inferior quadrant hemi anopia. It's the same thing, okay? Holy sweet goodness. Now we have this seventh one here. Seventh one is I damaged this whole thing. You know, I never even told you what the heck these pink structures are. I am so sorry about that. These pink structures here, all of these, this one here, this one here from both sides, they're called optic radiations. They're called optic radiations. So these uh, superior retinal fibers and inferior retinal fibers are make up what's called the optic radiations, or you can call this the geniculo calcarine tract. And the reason why it's coming from the geniculate body to the calcarine fissure. Okay? So these optic radiations, let's say that I damage the right optic radiation. So I damage my right optic radiations. Okay, right optic radiations, freaking going. Okay, so if that's damaged, let me get rid of this right here so I can make room here. Same thing, let me write, draw this right here, this right here, but because it's not affecting, it's a losing, you're losing both the quadrants, so we're just gonna make it two little boxes here. If I damage this one and I damage this one, what do I remember? Anything that's on the right side, I'm losing it from the left visual fields. So if I'm losing it from the left visual fields, then what must be happening here? I'm losing it from both the superior and inferior planes. So that means I'm losing all of the information from the left visual field of the left eye and the left visual field of the right eye. What do we call this one? If you remember, doesn't it seem very, very familiar? It looks just like this one right over here. What is this one over here called? This one was called left homonymous hemianopia. It's the exact type, exact same type here. So what is this called? Left homonymous hemianopia. Okay, last one and we're thankfully done here. Let's say that you damage a specific part of the occipital cortex. You know there's two arteries that are supplying the occipital lobe here. There's what's called the posterior cerebral artery, which is a part of the circle of Willis. And there's another one here called the middle cerebral artery, which is actually a branch of the circle of Willis. Let's say that you develop some type of most common cause here of some type of lesion within the occipital lobe is you develop a lesion here within the posterior cerebral artery. You still have blood that can supply the occipital lobe from the middle cerebral artery. So this is the middle cerebral artery. You still can get blood to the occipital lobe. Now there's a specific area in the occipital lobe that picks up very, very um, acute vision that is within the macula of the eye, okay? So there's the macular region of the occipital lobe. If the posterior cerebral artery is occluded, you might affect the blood flow to the macular region of the occipital lobe. But because we have these middle cerebral arteries, they're still gonna get blood to the macula. So what happens here is something really freaking weird is because you spared the macula by giving it blood flow from the middle cerebral artery, you spared the macular region of the occipital lobe. Then whenever you do their visual fields, so again, here's the left, here's the right eye, split up their visual fields here into left and right. There's something really thing, a weird here that we can actually include into this. I can put a circle here, and this circle here is representing the center of that part in the eye. You know how we have the macula lutea, where the fovea centralis is, the highest concentration of cones? What happens is if you can actually spare that macula 
because the posterior cerebral artery is occluded, but the middle cerebral artery is still getting blood flow to this area. This area of the macula is uh, the, this area of the occipital lobe where the macular impulses are coming to, that will be spared. But again, everything is on this right side. So if the right part of the occipital lobe is damaged, anything from the left visual field will be lost. So what am I gonna lose? I'll lose this part of the left visual field, and I'll lose this part of the left visual field, but guess what I will not lose? I won't lose this specific area right there, which is actually called the macular region. So this is called, it looks like it's, oh, isn't this left homonymous hemianopia? Yeah. This right here is called left homonymous hemianopia, but with sparing of the macula, with sparing of macula. Okay, that's the whole purpose of this. All right, so in this video we talked about the visual field processing, we talked about the visual field processing, we talked about the actual visual pathway, and we talked about associated lesions that could develop within the different parts of this visual pathway. Guys, I really hope all of this made sense. I really, really, really do hope that you guys did enjoy it, and I hope it helped. If it did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. All right, engineers, as always, until next time.